Companies have a wealth of data about their clients inside of Google Sheets. But what if you want to take that information and actually turn it into a full-fledged client portal? That's where you're going to want to use Softer. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. If you haven't gotten started with Softer yet, you can do so for free using the affiliate link in the description below. There are a lot of reasons to love Softer. One of them is that we can build unlimited applications regardless of what plan we're on, even the free plan. And you have the ability to actually index your portal for external visitors. You get unlimited visitors. Plus, you can have internal users. These might be the managers or the people working at your company. So depending on what pricing plan you're on is the number of internal users at your company. And then we have external users. And this is really generous. On the lowest paid tier plan, basic $49 a month, you can have a thousand of these external users, making this a perfect solution to use with clients. Today, we're going to be focusing on a specific template within Softer, but I did want to point out that there's this new AI app generator that you can use, meaning that you can type in a description, a prompt of what you want your app to be. It'll actually create it for you. It'll have images. It'll have landing pages. It'll have user groups and permissions automatically set up for you. And this works with Google Sheets. But like I said, for this example, let's go ahead and use the client portal template. We can do this. This is actually the first one I see up here, but if you don't see this in the first spot when you log in, you can click on new application and you can search for it or find it here. You'll notice that this has an icon of the tools that it's compatible with for that data source on the back end. Today, we're looking at Google Sheets, but you can also do this with Airtable. Let's go ahead and click on the template. From here, you could preview it, check out the different screens. We'll go ahead and use that template. In my case, I've already created my data source, so I'm gonna to connect to it, but you can click through the prompts as you're setting it up for the first time. We've now generated our application. Let's click on the button to go to the application. Now what this has done inside of my Google Drive account is actually provisioned a brand new spreadsheet for me. Now we could, if we wanted to, create our own spreadsheet and then connect it to Softer. In this case, we're having it set up that back end for us. So this has automatically created a spreadsheet and you'll notice that we have our different sheets here. We've got our first one for users. These are going to be the people who are actually accessing the application. And this could be both internal as well as external users. So in this case, we have different roles. We have an admin of the system. We have consultants who I think presumably are going to be working at our company internally. And then we have clients. These are the clients that are actually interacting and they want to see their projects and information in the portal. Next up, we have the clients table. You can think of the client as the customer account or the client information. So this is the name of the company. And this is going to be related to different contacts or different users that we saw here on that first page. Next, we have projects. These are the different items that we're working on on with our clients. And finally, we have invoices that we can serve up to our customers that they can view in one consolidated place. So back inside of Softer, this is what we call Softer Studio. This is kind of the playground where we get to edit our application. And like I said, we've got this nice template that looks great out of the box, but here's where we can change and make any additions to it that we want. The first thing I wanna point out is that you see a few different versions of our menu, our navigation here, and you might be wondering why that is. And if you take a look at this icon, you'll see that this is visible to clients, visible to consultants, to non logged in users and admins. And this is one of the most powerful features about Softer that we can actually configure these experiences based on whether someone's logged into the application, they're not logged into the application, or we can get really granular about their user roles. Let's dig into this for a moment. I'm gonna click on users. And here we can see our different users. These are syncing bi-directionally with what we have inside of Google Sheets. So remember, as we were taking a look at our users page, here we've got the names of our different users and information about them. And this data is syncing into our users table. So if we want, we could be adding people in Google Sheets. We could be doing that manually. We could be using an integration platform like Zapier or Make. Maybe we're using a script to add that information. Lots of different ways we might be adding users. We could also be adding them directly in software here, and that's going to add them back in the Google Sheet. So it really doesn't matter where you're adding those users, you're having the same experience. Let's take a look at those user groups that we mentioned a moment ago. And you can see that in this template, it's already created three user groups for us. We have our admins, our clients, and our consultants. And so we can go ahead and edit this and we can see it's named admins. We've got two different options. One is that we can add users manually if we want, but the more powerful one is that we can add users based on different conditions. In this case, we're saying, if the role of this person is admin, 
Therefore, they are an admin. So looking back at our spreadsheet, we've got Charles, who's listed as an admin. That means in software, he's going to have that role applied to him. But what's great about software is that you can actually add multiple conditions. So you could say, hey, if they're an administrator and they're based in the United States, or if they're an administrator or they're a manager and they're in HR, you can combine these different conditions so that you can have really granular permission sets. Let's go back into our pages. We can click on our home page here. And you'll notice that we have these different blocks on the page. These blocks are building blocks. You can essentially assemble them how you want. So on our front page, our home page here, most of these blocks are going to be static in nature. If I click this plus button to add a new block, we've got these two options of static and dynamic. Static is going to be anything like you'd imagine in a website builder, just a standard page builder. We can have headers and we can have different hero images with call to actions and features and pricing, all of that information that we just render on a page. It's not really connected to our Google Sheet. Instead, we're setting the styling and the content directly on the page. But let's check out a different page for a moment. If we open up our pages and let's go to our list of projects. In our list of projects, we've got my projects. And we click on that block. This is an example of a dynamic block. What a dynamic block means is that it's actually pulling the data live from inside of our spreadsheet. So remember we have this projects sheet over here and we have these different projects listed. We have a project image, we have a status, the client associated with it. That information is being pulled into our page, hence why it's called a dynamic block. Now let's go ahead and preview this as a user for a moment. So I'm gonna click this preview icon and you'll notice that right now we're a logged out user, meaning that it's redirecting us to this login page. But we've got this handy little toggle up top. What this allows us to do is to impersonate different users so that we can view our application through the lens of that person. So let's go ahead and take a look at this through the lens of Lisa, who's a client. And we've got this little message. We're going to click off of there. And so Lisa has a list of projects here. And you'll notice that she only sees two different projects. And we'll talk about why that is. But instead of Lisa, the client, we could also log in as Charles, who we discussed is the admin. And when Charles logs in, if we scroll down, we can see he's able to see all of these different projects in the application. So depending on who they are, if they're a client or if they're an administrator, they're seeing different things on the same page. Back inside of Software Studio, notice that this first block that we have is called My Projects. Well, this probably makes sense. The client is seeing her own projects, not all of the projects that we have across our application. And if we scroll down, there's another block that appears almost identical, and this is called All Projects. So what makes these two different, My Projects and All Projects? Notice that when we were actually previewing this, neither person saw actually both blocks. They're not looking at duplicates of this they saw the one that was relevant to them. So how is this handled? Well, if we click on this block, we've got two different ways we can do this. One is through visibility, and we can say who is able to see this block. So we could say logged in users or logged out users. In this case, we're saying both clients and consultants. So this is the internal consultants from our team, as well as the external clients that we're working with. They're both going to see my projects, the projects that they're working on. If we scroll down below to all projects and click on it and go over to our visibility, rules. This is only visible by the admins. That's why when Charles was logged in, he only saw all projects instead of projects that were assigned to him because he's an administrator. He doesn't have projects assigned to him. The other interesting thing going on here is that really those visibility rules were just around the block themselves. Do I see my projects block or all projects block? But if we click back on my projects, notice that a consultant still wasn't seeing all of the projects listed under my projects. And that's because we have the ability to add conditional filters here. So this conditional filter says if the client is marked as a client or if the assignee email matches the email address and check out how cool this is. We can say it matches the email address of the currently logged in user, the person who's logged into your application. And it's that conditionality that shows only the relevant projects to Lisa in this case. These are the ones that she's assigned to. Now, how are we managing this login experience for our clients? Well, if we go over to our pages, there's a page already created for us called login. And if we click and open this up, notice that we've got two different blocks. 
We've got one that redirects to if the person's not allowed to see this page. And then we have our login screen here, and this can be configured. So for example, right now we're logging in with email and password, but we could simply toggle on and say, hey, you can sign in with Google, which is probably a common use case for you since you're using Google Sheets in the first place. Now you'll notice there's additional sign-in options, including email code, SMS code, SSO, for example. One of the ways that I really like to get login information to my clients is by adding a user, we could put in their email address and name directly in software and we could say generate a temporary password or we could send them a magic link. And a magic link is just going to be a unique URL. It's going to be in their email. They can click and it's going to automatically authenticate them. What if we want to go a step further and really make this application our own? Well, one thing you could do is click on pages, add a new page, and you could add as many blocks to that page as you want to. Or we could take an existing page like our projects and maybe we want to add additional functionality through actions. This is one thing we haven't talked about so far. We could click on the actions tab here and what we're able to do is add different actions. Do we want it to be here at the top? Do we want it to be on each individual item? So maybe we've got a button, an action that happens on each card here for each project. So maybe it's one click update the status for an escalation. In this case, we want to have the ability to create a new project. And I don't see the ability to here right now. There's no button for that. So we've got some fields that we need here. And then if I go down, we can say, instead of add new record, we could change this to add project. So we can change the language for each of these to be about projects as opposed to just generic records. So now when we're logged in as a client and we scroll down, we can see this button to add a project, click that button, our modal pops up. Now we can go ahead and add our project and we can see that our project's been automatically added to our Google spreadsheet. What if we wanna make it so only the consultants can create new projects and the clients can't? Well, we can easily do that with some visibility rules. So on our action still here, we've got our add project and we can click on this visibility rule. Now we can say only logged in users can see this. But in addition to that, we can only have our consultants actually see that button and actually be able to create a new project. So now if I'm logged in as Lisa, I don't see that option to create a project, but if I find a consultant like Trudy, she now has the option to add a project. Now that's a really convenient way of managing that visibility of that action, but you might be thinking of use cases where, hey, we have to actually have two blocks, right? We've got my project and we've got all projects, and now we'd have to be duplicating some of that logic. Well, we can save you a step. If we go back to our users area, we talked about users and users User groups, but we can also apply data restrictions globally throughout our entire application. We can add a new restriction. We'll select our projects, click next. We could apply this then to our clients. And with our clients, we could say, okay, what do they have the ability to do? We could add certain restrictions around what records they're able to view or around creation. We just showed you an example of how we didn't want the client to be able to create records. We could simply toggle this on and now we don't need to apply those permissions at the block level. There are so many more things that you can do to extend the power of your client portal through Google Sheets and software. If you haven't gotten started yet, sign up using the link in the description below.